out your style of those uh, and um, I'll go over that in a minute but we have five items on the agenda for uh, consent uh, and they will be considered for approval in accordance with the recommendation by staff uh, unless an individual present or a member of the Commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda and can separately considered under the public hearing agenda the city of Des Moines is pleased to provide accommodations to individuals or groups with disabilities and encourages participation in city government. To better serve you when possible, please notify us at least three business days in advance at area code 515-283-4209 should special accommodations be required. Assistive listening devices are available for the meetings in the council chambers. The Planning and Zoning Commission meetings are broadcast on cable or on Mediacom cable channel seven for customers with that service. The broadcast is also streamed live uh, on the Des Moines City's website, which is www.dmgov.org, you need to click the Watch Live link. Uh, let me go over this consent, these consent items. There are five of those. The first one is a city-initiated request to amend Des Moines 2020 Community Character Plan to incorporate the Beaverdale Neighborhood Plan update as an element. Is there anyone here that is speaking either, uh, well, mostly in opposition to that item? Is there opposition for that? Okay, uh, then we're going to probably need to pull that off. All right, that's why we do this, so we make sure that we've got that covered. Number two is a city-initiated request to amend Des Moines 2020 Community Character Plan to incorporate the Woodland Heights Neighborhood Plan update as an element. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to that item? I'm going to apologize. I'm Woodland Heights rather than Beaverdale. All right, so you're wanting two off, not one. Well, Beaverdale can pass. It was Woodland Heights that I I know. All right, thank you. Number three is a city initiated request to amend zoning ordinance text in chapter 134 of the city code with regard to the addition of a definition for small engine repair use. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to that item? In opposition. Number four, or I'm sorry, number five is a city initiated request for re review and approval of a site plan police department evidence storage facility phase two under design guidelines for DR districts on property located at 25 East 1st Street to allow construction of a 6,046 square foot, should be feet, a two-story addition to police station for storage and handling of investigative evidence. And I believe, Jason, you have something you'd like to bring up on that. I, <clears throat> we're still recommending this be on the consent. I just wanted to clarify, we're working with them on some solutions uh, for the refuge uh, containment and so we'd like to change condition number three uh, to just be as approved by the planning director okay yeah go ahead and ask if you got um, my, my question has to do with your number two comment and and I agree with that wholeheartedly because that those little 3d images it really looks very tacked on mm -hmm. I guess my specific question is did by chance um, Jack Porter or Shippo take a look at this or did anyone talk to them? I know that when the window replacement was done for this building and that one, that did go through and he had. I don't believe that, that they've been involved with that. <clears throat> I do know um, from earlier in the week when we had the Urban Design Review Board meeting that we talked about some kind of the same things as item two, but um, we certainly could, could run it by them. But at this point, I don't believe they've had any input. I think that would be a good thing to You're do. Right. I don't have any problem with asking them for some any input they might have. Do you have any problem? You want to pull it off, or I don't think it needs to be pulled off if you're willing to, to sure, do that. Sure, absolutely. On there. Yeah, okay. no problem. All right. Is there anyone here who doesn't know what you're necessarily here for? And I know that's kind of an embarrassing question, but the bottom line is we want to make sure that everybody's on board so that if we need something pulled off, we can do that. So what we're going to do is pull off item number two, which is the community development. Uh, plan for uh, the Woodland Heights, which is item number two. Is there any that we need to add on? Should Mr. Add on. Chair, um, did you read number four or did I just not hear it? No, I, I read number four. I'm sorry. I'll run over it again. I read three. I, didn't I think read you four. read I'm sorry. three, but I don't You're right. think you read four. You're right. Item number four is city initiated request to amend zoning ordinance. See, it looks like the same one. City ordinance. <laughs> text in chapter 134 of the city code with regard to paving requirements for parking and outdoor storage uses. You're right, Shirley, I did not. 
Is anyone here in opposition to that item? Okay, seeing none. Is there any items we ought to put on consent? Item eight. Item eight. Everybody have a chance to look at item eight? Is there anyone who does not want item eight moved to consent? Is there anyone in the audience that's here on item number eight? I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Request from East Village Growth Partners, LLC, represented by Tim Ripma, for review and approval of a site plan under design guidelines in a C3B district and for multiple family dwellings on property located at 350 East Locust Street to allow development of a five-story mixed-use building with 21 units of residential apartment dwellings, 5,750 square feet of ground floor retail office space and 4,725 square feet of fifth floor commercial office space. The subject property is owned by the city of Des Moines. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to that item? In opposition to that item? So anyone has a question with respect to whether or not they're here for that item? Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, you, well, you, you made the motion, right? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of moving item number eight to consent, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Acclamation, Kathy. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and take up one, three, four, five, and eight with respect to consent. Do we have a motion? Two has been pulled off. I move that these go to consent. All right. Will's, it's Will's motion. Any, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Everybody, we got everybody. She's hiding back here. You got it, Kathy? All right, it's acclamation. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take up number two. Jason, you wanna do that, or should we have somebody else, sir? Chair, members of the commission, Jason Van Essen, City's Planning Staff. I think uh, given that we had the 5.30 presentation, um, I would be comfortable with maybe just turning it over uh, to the, the individual has a question or comment and then okay. kind of react to that. So let us know afterwards if you have questions for our staff. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of item number two, in favor of item number two? Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition? Please come forward, ma'am. Give us your name and address. Wendy Lucina, 4155 53rd Street, Des Moines, Iowa. Not necessarily against passing the plan. There's one element in it um, that I want you guys to pass conservatively or knowingly if you're going to pass it. It's on page 20. It's the reference to the Bicycle and Trail Master Plan. Um, with recent controversies on the impl implementation of some of the on-street bike lanes, I started doing research. And many that know me know when I do research, I hit things very, very hard. Some of the things I found I have some challenges with. Um, more than half of the, of the design committee does not even live in the city of Des Moines that wrote the plan. And then compliance prior to implementation and the process that they're using. Cards aren't being sent. Um, I just, I'm floored. C uh, city Municipal Code, I'm just going to put this up here if I can. The one thing I want to clarify is please read, read the top. I'm a bicyclist. I bike. However, my concerns are over the process of how the committee was selected and how the on-street connectors are happening. <laughs> now, I've looked up city code. The bottom of this shows some of the research that I've done. Um, I can hand over here public right-of-way city code referencing the blah, 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 blah after recommendation of the city planning and zoning commission. Um, municipal code, traffic and vehicles, again, um, no multi-use trail shall be considered as a street or a highway. Um, whenever any person amends boundaries, it does, it, I can't find anywhere in the city code where it exempts the city from these zoning ordinances or recommendations, and I'm more than willing to hand this over to you. Um, park, and, park and Rec Municipal Code, um, also cautioning, this one's kind of important 
Because not only, not only when they're putting the plans through for implementation are they neglecting to go through the Planning and Zoning Board, they're also neglecting to go through the Access Advisory Board. And the Access Advisory Board is the one that ensures that disabled people have equal opportunity to use public, public right-of-way space safely. Um, that board, I cannot find anywhere in their minutes where any of the on-street trail impl implementations are even reviewed by their board, nor can I find any in yours. Now, both committees stress this. Both the commission and the advisory board review any off-street trails that are implemented. However, these on-street ones, neither one is, has seen either one of them to ensure compliance. Um, the other challenge I have, or, or just things that I'm going, whoa, I don't understand this, is the Park and Rec uh, Board never actually approved it as an action item. The Bike and Trail Master Plan, you can see here, they have a section, this is dated, you can see the date of the meeting, April 26, 2011. It's on their agenda not under the four board action, it's on a file and receive. So the board action would imply, imply implementing the plan, file and receive would mean receive it as a communication. This, this concerns me. City Council the same way, it never approved it in that meeting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that meeting minutes was the same way. I didn't print those off, but the item number says receive and file. Um, the other issue, or the other concern I have is the traffic and safety committee, when they read this on May 10th of 2011, um, the plan was gone over. Wendy, not to interrupt you, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to wrap my fingers around this. What you're complaining about is the bike trails, right? Well, my concern is that the Woodland, Woodland Heights did a great job with that master plan. On page 20 of the But their, you understand the master plan is a guideline. It's not approving or disapproving any, any trails. That's not something that was done through this instrument. And I understand that, but when they walk out of here, they're going to start implementing that plan. Actually, they won't start implementing that plan. That, they'll work with city to try and implement those plans. Okay. But what I'm saying is in the, what's been happening so far is when that plan is being implemented so far, planning and zoning is basically policies aren't, aren't being abided by. Now, I wanna, I wanna say that first thing when I put oversight, oversight, I don't think anybody in the city in, is intentionally overseeing this. I don't want that neighborhood put under the impression that we're gonna pass this plan, so run, run, run with, your, with implementing more and more bike and trails via that master plan. Because I've been asking the questions to the city council and legal but I, to I, I clarify what, some of this. I understand what and you're I saying, but back that's not implementation. Their proposal is not implementation, it's a guideline to, to move forward with implementation. All the stuff that you're talking about is part of the implementation process. Correct. But that hasn't started yet. My point would be that when they walk out of here, they're going to use that as their guide as a neighborhood association to say this, this and is. And then at that point, you're going to be involved with all those bike things that you're already talking about, whether or not it goes before, before Parks and Rec, whether or not it goes before us. All those things will have to occur before the bike trail will ever be put in. Correct. My concern is that the neighborhood associations that are put under, under the impression that they can go ahead and start their planning in accordance with this bike and trail master plan. Well, once all this research is done and everything lays out through legal, if that bike and trail master plan changes, they need to know that. Now, let me stress. I'd like for you to pass it. I'm on the NRB. Last night we passed it. When I brought this to the NRB's attention, they suggested that we table it, and I said I don't think it's in our realm because this is really a planning and zoning issue, and it would be planning and zoning that has to say, yes, that bike and trail master plan is acceptable here, and if you guys are comfortable with that, I'd love to see you pass it. My board passed it, um, I guess, but I'd like to see a caveat in there, maybe that we could ask city staff to explain how these oversights happened. What I think happened is you had park and rec implementing the off-street trails, you have traffic and transportation implementing the on-street trails, and they're not coming all the way together. I don't think anybody's maliciously, I've spoken to a few people, 
nobody, any time that I'm kind of starting to make people think, even city staff members are going, oh, wait a minute. And at least saying, wait a minute, never thought of it from that perspective. Is the Planning and Zoning Board the place to ask the city to make sure those two departments are working better in the future, to make sure the disabled aren't denied that right to the public right-of-way space? I don't know. But if, if the bike and trail master plan has continued to be implemented, you're taking specific roadways that you're designating with a small amount of space of the road that's no longer shared. The way it is now, any and, bike can go anywhere, and, but when you I take understand. those, you are creating a land use change. I understand all of that, but what does that have to do with the master plan for, for Woodland Heights? I, I don't want Woodland Hills to be left under the, I don't want Woodland Hills to, or Woodland Heights to be left under the impression that if, if they go with this and then start implementing it, the basically page 20, try and hit that right away, then try to push it through the city only to realize that maybe the bike and trail master plan had to change. That's kind of my point. And from you guys' perspective, be, you know, I'd like to see you pass it. Um, when you said opposition, I, I did have concerns about being opposed, but it's more of just, let's just make sure that all the processes are being respected. And also, I'm working with Ben Page, the director of public, public or park and rec, to possibly look at how the streets were picked because you're looking at the busiest streets in the city of Des Moines that are on this plan. And the people who wrote the plan, half of them don't even live in the city of Des Moines. And Ben is starting to see that maybe, maybe, well, I can't speak for Ben, but via my conversations with him, he's willing to have conversations. I can say that. I don't want to speak on his behalf. I don't think he necessarily agrees with me, disagrees with me, but I think he sees where maybe some conversations need to be had. If I can leave it at that, and I'll go. Okay. You got one minute, but that's no, you're fine. I, if questions or do you guys want copies of these codes? Do you? Do we have any questions, Greg, Mike? Do you have Just a few comments, uh, Wendy. Thank you for coming tonight. I, for the commission's benefit, I, uh, when you raised these questions last night at the at the uh, um, neighborhood realization board, mm -hmm. and I pulled our planning file that we had on this item. Just for the commission's reference. Um, Amendments to the comprehensive plan are advertised in the Des Moines Register before you have a hearing on those amendments. Individual mailed notifications go out on zoning items per code. So this was just a comprehensive plan amendment, therefore there was a notice that was published in the paper. I've got a copy of the receipt from the Des Moines Register that, that notice was published. The Planning Commission held their hearing on June 2nd, 2011 on this bike and trail master plan um, in accordance with the notice. You did uh, vote 11-0 to recommend approval of the master plan as a comprehensive plan amendment to our 2020 community character plan. It was 11-0. That was then passed on to the city council. And actually, um, as I read the resolution, I have a copy of the resolution of the council approving the, the plan as an element of our 2020 community character plan and it states in here that the trails and greenways advisory committee unanimously recommended approval of the plan as an element on may 9th 2011 on may 10th of 2011 the traffic safety committee unanimously recommended approval of the plan as an element of the 2020 character plan and then um, the council uh I'm sorry, the Plan Zoning Commission recommended it on June 2nd, and then ultimately on June 13th of 2011, the council approved it as an element of the 2020 Community Character Plan. So it appears that May 9th, May 10th, those committees forwarded their recommendations to the council. The council received and filed those on May 23rd, referred it to the commission for review because it was an element of the comp plan. You had your hearing on June 2nd. They approved it, the council approved it on June 13th. So um, I guess based on the record that I have in front of me, it appears that it, it did follow our, all of our processes. And as far as the commission is concerned, it is an element of our 2020 community character plan, has been approved by council, and therefore I think it's appropriate to have it referenced in the neighborhood's plan and be adopted. Thank you. Any other questions, just... Ted? Did you have a question? Go ahead. I don't, I don't think there's any 
problem at all with discussing how the master plan for um, the bike lanes get connected to the trails. I think that ought to happen. Um, I don't think it, it has anything to do with what we're discussing here today. And if it came back as an, as an item um, that required some sort of approval from us, I'd be happy to look at it. But I, I, think, it's, I think we're waylaying the, uh, the Woodland Heights plan. And, and, and I, I agree. Don't, I don't think it's That's... an appropriate place to do it. Okay. So I think, that wasn't, I think we yeah. ought to pass their hard work okay. tonight and take this up at a different time. Thank Can you. I ask maybe that the commission would consider having a discussion about? You could certainly talk to staff and they can put you on the agenda. That's what would necessarily okay. happen. So we can put that on an agenda. See if you can get it on an agenda item. Thanks for your time. And like I yep. said, we, my, my group approved it. And Tim, do you have anything? No? Okay. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to the item? In opposition. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Great. Move staff. All right. Staff's been moved. Any questions, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Acclamation, Kathy. Got it? Okay. I'm going to move on to, uh, well, item number six. Jason, we haven't done a continuance on that. I understand that the, there's been a request for a continuance on item number six. That's correct. The applicant uh, sent us a communication requesting continuance to the next meeting. Uh, the next meeting is April 4th. Okay. Do we have a motion? Greg? I'll, I'll move. All right. Move with recommendation. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of continuing item number six to the 4th of April, please signify by raising your right hand. Ted, are you up? Ted? Okay. Opposed, same sign? Okay, thank you. Acclamation again, Kathy. All right, moving on to item number seven, which is a request from First Equity Property Holders Acquisitions Fund 2 LLC, represented <coughs> by Ann Walters, to rezone property in the vicinity of 2303 Merrill Hay Road. The subject property is owned by Roanoke Holdings LLC. Uh, Joan Thaler, uh, invest, MEM Investments, LLC, Dolores Sayers, and Jackson Hine. Uh, first, we have to determine whether or not the proposed rezoning is in accordance with the 2020 Community Character Plan and amend the plan to revise to future land use uh, designation for low-density residential to commercial auto-oriented small strip, small-scale strip development. Rezone the property from R160 to one, fam one family low density residential district and C1 neighborhood retail commercial to PUD plan unit development, uh, and then approve a PUD concept plan to allow redevelopment of 2.38 acres of a 12,900 square feet one story pharmacy and general retail store with two lane drive through window and 84 off street uh, parking spaces. Jason, are you? Yes, Chair, Members of Commission, Jason Van Essen with the city's planning staff. Uh, we have the response cards being passed around. Uh, we have the aerial identifying the subject property or land on the northeast corner of Merle Hay Road in Hickman. The uh, site currently contains or had been a uh, filling station location, and, and there's some also some houses that kind of parlay into the need to rezone some of the land, some of it being commercially zoned currently. Photographs of the site looking to the north and to the east. And this is looking at Merle Hay Road along the uh, kind of the be the west perimeter of the site. Response map cards being passed around. Go ahead and go through the concept plan. This shows up good. So here's the, the intersection, Merle Hay Road and Hickman. Uh, shows uh, parking with the building in the back, uh, drive around facilities, uh, the existing ACE hardware, or hardware excuse me, uh, building and, and, and uh, other businesses to the, to the east. Uh, one thing I want to point out while I'm, I'm talking about that property, you can see there is some notes on here that show up. Um, tonight we're really focused on the rezoning of this PUD, but this is really part of a larger project for this, this area. And you 
there are other improvements that are part of this. There's uh, some landscaping and fencing. The fencing does show up on here in this drawing, but there's also some landscaping in the parking lots proposed and uh, some other uh, improvements with regard to screening, uh, trash enclosure stuff in the back. So we want to bring that to everybody's attention, but uh, even though the focus is really more about the boundary or within, or the property within this boundary here on the PUD. Elevations of the building. One thing I want to point out here is that the, this shows uh, kind of a standard sign. We've actually worked with them and uh, they're willing to do uh, adopt the staff recommendation, which is it's still a taller sign, uh, 22 feet tall, but it has a solid base and kind of reads a little more like a, a, a standard uh, sign, not a pole sign. But anyway, that's a solution that we've worked out with them at other locations and it seems agreeable to do at this location as well. Um, really the last tip that I have is um, one thing that we're working with them, uh, you know, PUDs come in as a concept plan and then there's a development plan that comes later through our typical site plan review process and a lot of the detail engineering work really gets thought out at that development uh, plan stage and we are working with them to ensure that uh, the turning, the entrances, the drives work, um, including the, up here in this area where we've identified a need. Uh, to bring this down a little bit to allow a driveway to the north to continue to function for this property that's up here. So uh, we're working on, with them on those kinds of solutions um, and have met with them multiple times to get to the point where we are today. I'd be happy to answer any questions. We are recommending approval. We have a handful of, of conditions, but I won't read them verbatim. Mr. Chair. I have a question. Um, I know that you're working uh, with the applicant on many things here, but um, how are you handling the trees that are being recommended? Um, we have a mitigation plan, and this certainly uh, reaches that, and replacing 11 overstory trees with a fence is really not acceptable. I mean, they just, there's no comparison there. So are you working with them for off-site of planting those trees or what's happening there? Well, the, uh, Mike's been more intimately involved with the discussion, so I'll turn that. This to isn't you. showing the landscaping that's being installed on the site. It's not but just it says, the fencing. It says right here, 11 trees will be replaced with a fence. But they have to submit a landscaping plan yeah. and the mitigation ordinance requires trees to be planted on the site. And off for mitigation site, for removal. If there's not room, if there's not room on the site, they have to plant them off the site. Okay. But this has to comply with our our landscape standards. Okay. The key with the PUD is that you know at a concept plan, it's it's conceptual and there's a lot of details that we still have to work out once we get the development plan. Well, there isn't any way we can save some of these trees. I, I think mean, they've worked hard with us to try to make the site fit a bunch of different parameters with regard to where drive drive aisles and access is. There's a median in Merle Hay that's made this a kind of a complex development and with regard to their also meeting their program needs for the site. So uh, I don't know if Mike, if you have anything to add from your discussions. But. I think overall the, the initial set that was submitted had the landscape plan in it. We received, I think, just the first two sheets of the revisions that addressed a majority of our comments about last Thursday. So. Again, they have to comply with our landscape standards and they are being required to meet our mitigation ordinance for any removals. Greg, did you have something? Yeah, I have a couple. Can you leave that up, please, site sure, plan? Yeah, sure. A couple short questions. I'll try to make them not too much about comments yet. Um, <laughs> I, Good I guess my question is, um, why, um, well, I, I want to talk about the intersection, just sort of the urban corner. And currently, if I'm not mistaken, all sides of this corner have commercial buildings on them. And um, small comment, then I'll turn into a question. But I feel like this is backwards. That we're, we're there's this beautiful sort of mid-century retail building where Ace Hardware and 
I'm sure that was a grocery store at one time. At least the structure looks like one. It's this beautiful little building along there. Pretty good Chinese food. And, um, and then the other buildings. Sorry, it was a misstatement. Um, commercial, commercial. But guy. so what we're doing in effect here is, is something that I don't think we want to be doing downtown or in, in, our, in our Des Moines neighborhoods. This to me feels like a solution where you bulldoze the corner and you put a parking lot. So I don't understand why it's backwards. How did we get to this point? Well, a couple things on the review of it. Um, initially in the review, the staff did suggest that they look at locating the building out at the corner. Um, there's a lot of different parameters on the site. First of all, um, one is that a um, portion of the property is actually um, being acquired from the owner of the Ace Hardware building. So right now they have some, for example, some outdoor storage that's right out along um, out along Merle Hay Road that's actually getting relocated back behind the CVS building up in this corner. Jason, I don't know if you can point to that on there, just <coughs> north, north of the Ace Hardware. So they're relocating that, that outdoor storage that's currently out by Merle Hay back behind the building. Um, when we talked to them about moving the building to the south, one of the things that, that, that came up with concern was that if you just simply flip this building and have, uh, well, one, if you just slide it to the south, and then move the parking up to the north. Their customers all have to walk through the drive-through lanes to get to the to the store entrance if the store entrance was out at the corner. If they flipped the building, kind of on a 180 axis, and had the corner of the building, moved the building to the south, but had the corner of the building up on the north end of it, the issue with that was they're trying to have some shared parking between the Ace Hardware building and the CVS store also. So that puts all of the parking to the north further away from the Ace Hardware building. So my understanding is, is that through all of this land assemblage that's occurred, there were requirements of the Ace Hardware owner on what they wanted for parking access. There were requirements on circulation, number of stalls, numerous things that ultimately kind of pushed us to this this configuration. Um, what staff tried to do in our review was try and offset those, and it's not perfect, but we did our best to try and offset those those concerns. One, uh, we feel it's a better plan from the perspective of screening the outdoor storage that was previously out by Merle Hay. It's now back uh, screened by a building and will also be enclosed. It improves the circulation for the parking behind the existing Ace hardware. It uh, installs a basically a five foot wide sidewalk um, that's separated from the street curb along Merle Hay and Hickman by a five foot green strip all on, on both perimeters. Then there's a five foot setback behind the walk and between the walk and the parking along both streets, uh, along uh, Merle Hay, I'm sorry. Then we asked for a, a um, kind of a wrought iron fence along the edge of that parking to create more of an urban edge, similar to what we did on the Dolls store on, on Ingersoll and what we've requested on uh, CVS at 2nd um, and Euclid. Um, and then uh, we asked for a, a more monument sign. It obviously is, is tall, but it was a compromise between a purely a, a pylon sign with two poles for the base and a you know, re requiring an eight foot tall monument sign. So it was a compromise on that. I think the other part of it was, was that in exchange for getting the uh, ability to expand or create this storage area for the ACE hardware, we asked them to look at what they could do to make improvements to that site and to make it tie in with the rest of this development. So again, along the edge of that, right now it's just the sidewalk and there's parking spaces with, with um, uh, curb stops. There's no landscaping, and then it's the Ace Hardware building. What they're proposing as part of this, and to tie in the design is, again, continue the kind of wrought iron fence along the back edge of the sidewalk, along the parking. They've agreed to put in landscape islands 
on the at the ends of each of the parking rows in front of the Ace Hardware building, and then we're getting the trash enclosure that's unenclosed right now on the back side of the building would be screened by this outdoor storage area, it would be inside that outdoor storage area. So given all of the constraints of ownership and requirements on the people who were assembling the land and, and selling the land and um, trying to address urban design and all of the complications as far as um, uh, just fitting multiple things on the site, um, this was, was a configuration. We also had to deal with the um, median that's in Merle Hay Road and where the, the curb cut could be for the entrance to this. Um, if you put another building out at the corner, th this, I mean, technically you could say, well, what if another building was there? Um, I don't know if they would meet our parking requirements under our code for that much square footage of space, nor do I think the, I think the traffic department was concerned about just the numbers initially generated just by this store, let alone adding additional square footage. So there were a lot of things that we had to look at on it. Um, and uh, uh, this was the best best solution that we could come up with from a negotiation standpoint by staff and the applicant. Any other questions? Seeing none, I, I assume you're here, Bill, to yep. appear on behalf of the applicant. Yep. Please give us your name and address. My name is William Lillis. My address is 317 uh, 6th Avenue, Suite 300. Uh, appearing on behalf of the applicants, actually, there's uh, uh, CVS is First Equity, and the other one would be Joan Thaler, who is uh, Mr. Margulies, Richard Margulies. Some of you may know him. Uh, let me give you a little uh, background. I've got a, I think, frankly, I think the overhead, and I think uh, Greg has asked some questions that were uh, very, very pertinent to where we started and what, where we've come from. So I'm going to try to look at this if we can. Just scoot that over here. Right here. This is a this is an aerial. I think you might have it in your packet uh, to identify the site, the corner, uh, busy corner, Hickman, of course, and Merle Hay. Uh, the uh, building it was. Uh, frankly, a thrift way for all of us who were that old, and then a Safeway, and then it was a Flower City, and now it's an Ace Hardware. It is a uh, building that's been owned by the Margulies family for, I think, since the 50s. Uh, so that property and the access that comes off of Merle Hay, which is uh, pretty much in the middle, it, it kind of follows this, uh, this access that comes off of Merle Hay. There's been some trading of land back and forth between the Margulies property, which is the uh, Ace Hardware, and the back of the store, and uh, the common driveway that comes off of Hickman, the common driveway that'll serve uh, off of Merle Hay, and then the store here. The first thing that the Margulies family, and the tenants in particular, and the Chinese uh, 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 restaurant and the uh, Ace Hardware, they did not want, Greg, to answer your question, very, uh, we talked with uh, Mike about this uh, at great length, they did not want the store to be on the corner, and they did not because they didn't want to, frankly, uh, take the visibility away from this corner for uh, Hickman and for Merle Hay. Uh, the geometry, for lack of a better way to say it, uh, really wouldn't lend itself to do all of the things that staff wanted to do, the corner, the access, the uh, things that CVS wanted to do and uh, Mr. Margulies wanted to do with his existing building. So what we have uh, come up with is this uh, drawing here that would be, frankly, shows the color uh, as far as the landscaping and uh, more detail than what the staff uh, presentation piece had. So again, this is where the, uh, uh, the uh, Ace Hardware store is. It's very tight in there. If, if you've used that uh, parking lot, it's angled parking. It's very difficult to, to get the parking there. So what's, and then I think uh, someone asked the question about the, the tree mitigation. Uh, we intend to take and to not only take care of the trees that are going to be removed from the site, pretty much up here in this corner, uh, and put a wrought iron fence on the uh, lineal footage of uh, Merle Hay, 
come down to the corner, take it back over to the front on Hickman. There's a common driveway here. And then uh, Mr. Margulies, we work with, he's agreed to take that same uh, wrought iron black fence and take it in front of the Ace Hardware store. It's a real challenge there because he doesn't have a lot of room to pull in and whether that uh, fence would go on the south side of the uh, uh, five foot sidewalk uh, or whether it go on the north side, we're working with staff to do that. And then to put some trees uh, in the front of the building here. Uh, granted, that's outside the PUD. The PUD is uh, dealing with basically common driveways, common driveways. And then back here, there's a area that uh, is a trade of uh, some of the land between Mr. Margulies and uh, CBS, ultimately then to create back here the storage area. There would be a fence that would be like, if you can follow my finger, all the way across here. And then back here, there would be a creation of a fenced-in area to take care of the fertilizer and the things that the Ace Hardware store, it really gives them a home, and probably to put their uh, uh, dumpster and so forth back into this area. So this will be a new facility. Uh, CVS, it will be all brick. Uh, the uh, elevations uh, we'll share with you. If I can find them. I've got them right here. This would be the elevation of the store from the south. This would be looking from the south. This would be looking from the west, which would be the Merle Bay side. This would be the back elevation, which uh, would be back on the uh, perimeter to the east. And this would be the north. So uh, and it would be all brick. It would be the same uh, type of brick, the red brick that uh, I think you've seen at uh, uh, in Highland Park, second in Euclid. And that site plan has come here uh, to deal with a vacation question and so forth. The site has been an item of uh, discussion with uh, not only uh, the staff but with the Rural Hay Association. And this is the uh, model of what the sign would be. So that would be the brick base, a red brick. It would be an electronic uh, uh, message unit. And then this would be matching the uh, elevation and the uh, decor on the uh, store. And then this would be a welcome to the Merle Hay uh, neighborhood. Uh, uh, welcome to the Merle Hay neighborhood, I think is what it, the, the script would say. Uh, there is one question that uh, has been raised uh, this afternoon by uh, staff, and we have no objection if, in fact, there's one house that's left here. And uh, I think Jason had a drawing of, can we modify this here to provide for a driveway there? Uh, the answer is yes. If in fact, the property owner, and I think he's filed a card uh, in object objection, if we, in fact, have a common driveway, it's not clear that we do. Uh, we're definitely going to provide uh, that uh, house with its own driveway, so it would not be shared with, uh, with our driveway on, that, uh, uh, on the north end. Uh, if we don't, uh, it's kind of an unusual building, as far as I can see. It doesn't appear that there's ever been a garage and there doesn't even appear that there was any kind of a driveway at all. So we'd have to, we have a survey and of course we'll respect whatever common driveway if there is one. Uh, that's a solvable issue as far as the detail. I think we lose a parking space or something there so that they could provide an access to that house. We're not intending to uh, landlock. It's kind of a long, narrow uh, uh, lot. Uh, We'd welcome questions that the uh, commissioners might have regarding uh, this uh, project. Uh, it's a great improvement, we believe, and we've been to the Merle Hay uh, Neighborhood Association, a couple of representatives, I think Joanne's here, as is Jason Pulliam, and we secured the approval of the association regarding this particular project. Uh, we think it's a major improvement for the neighborhood, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, renovating that uh, that corner. It's been a corner that's been a challenge for a long time. We initially, I should say, we looked at the piece of property across the street where the was well, a Presbyterian church. I think it might be a Baptist church now. And uh, 
and to look at the covenants and so forth. And long story short, uh, it can't be used for any church, anything other than a church. But uh, we think uh, this is a great corner, and we look forward to yet another development uh, for CVS in the city. Any questions? Welcome your questions. Any questions? Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Is there anyone here to speak in, I'm going to open the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Ma'am, please come forward. Give us your name and address. I'm Joanne Hanover. I live at 1406 Merle Hay Road. Uh, I brought a copy tonight of uh, the board meeting on January 13th, and they did take a vote to support this. Uh, it, it was five to zero, although although that's not in the minutes. The five to zero. Ma'am, are you wanting to file that? Those minutes. Uh, if I can get a copy of it, because I just pulled this out tonight to to bring. Um, that's up to you. I mean, however you want to handle it. You can file a copy of it if you want, or you can just mail it in. That's fine too. Well, then I'll mail it. This goes to council when. I'd be going to council on the 25th of March for set here. Okay, so you need to have that mailed to them before the 25th. Okay. Thank you. I can do that. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> yes. Um, there was an old beat up gas station on that corner, and it was purchased by the people who used to own the car title, red and yellow building. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about if you ever went by there. And when the city changed their ordinances and they could no longer have car titles there, they bought that gas station. They're in Roanoke. Am I saying that right? <laughs> Roanoke in Georgia. So they have no interest in Des Moines, period. They've just been sitting on that for a long time. I'm happy to see something there, but I do have some concerns about it. Um, we have two pharmacists within a block that I hope are not impacted by this. Both of them have been there for a long time, and they're very well liked and very popular, so I'm hoping that will not affect their business. But I also want to see that awful, ugly down and out building out of there too. Um, as usual, Mr. Lillis has always been very accommodating and they're trying very hard because they know I don't like the 22 foot sign. <laughs> I mean, just think of that, <laughs> how big that is. And they're trying to they really are trying hard to please everybody. And I know that's not easy. I even asked Mike about trying to get the median repaired out there because it's just a mess. And I'm afraid that it's just going to be worse with more traffic. It's a busy intersection. And Merklin Way is in the middle of it, and people use Merklin Way like a race place because they're, they're heading for 235. So there are lots of side things, but I think on the whole, it's a good thing. Okay. Thank you. Just a minute. Any questions? CJ? Joanne. Um, the sign, I, I kind of feel that's a really tall sign, too. How does the neighborhood feel about the bottom half, which basically just says, welcome to the neighborhood? 
I mean, is that something that the neighborhood requested or? No, it started out with pillars. Um, yeah, it started out that it had pillars all along the side. That's your other, that's your other layout, Bill. Okay, okay. And then I asked them about putting in a flower bed at the bottom of it to kind of, and to build it up with bricks that matched the building. And then, was this yesterday or today? Well, I can't remember which. Yesterday. That, that they came up with this, that they've negotiated with the city. Any, any other questions? Yeah, CJ, <laughs> follow up? Thank you. I still think that's not an attractive sign, but um, I, I just think it could use a little more design. And I, I know this neighborhood needs uh, development like this, but I think, uh, and I like CVS Pharmacy, don't get me wrong. I have a place in Sanibel Island, and they are a great pharmacy down there. Well, th they're the only one, so I guess they have to be great. <laughs> But I can tell you they don't have a sign like that, and they have not taken any trees down. So I know that they are a good corporate when they're required to be. Okay. Thank well, you. When I first brought this up, I was told that that meets the city's ordinance. Okay. It, it can be yes, that. Yes, I have a we'll question. Thank you, Joanne, for leading into my question. It's not to you, actually. It's to staff. Um, and it's not specific to this particular signage. Um, but it's, uh, in my opinion, an ongoing and increasing problem in the city of Des Moines. And I'm referring specifically to this as indicated on the uh, screen as the electronic, electronic message unit. unit. Um, I, ha I ask city staff if the size of these electronic message units are regulated by ordinance, if the lumens are regulated, if the action speed is regulated, if the color is regulated, and if there are other criteria that are applied before these are approved. In my opinion, these are a safety hazard. They catch the motorist's eye, uh, they detract from the business of driving, and if they're not regulated, I urge the city to study doing exactly that. Any other questions? Questions, please. Greg. Yeah, one, one, Joanne, I had a question for you. Yeah. Um, as this went through the neighborhood committee and you guys were visiting, um, how did you guys feel about, uh, can you put up that aerial again, please, and show us the, the idea that the, the pharmacy is removing the, the houses, of course, and being tucked in with houses on the, the sides there on the north and the east, as well as across the street. Um, was there any concern, right? Aren't, aren't there houses across the street? No, from I don't. Church. Is that where the church is? No, the church was on down Hickman in the next block. Oh, I was looking at this. There's not a single stand. No, the houses that they it's were. Not a uh, that's a <laughs> restaurant. Right across. Uh, okay. Was there any concern or discussion about this not, the, the pharmacy not being on Hickman, but being tucked down Merle Hay, tucked in by the homes. Was there any concern? No, I did not hear that come up. Okay. Tim, do you have something? Hey. Yeah, I am too, as I think my colleagues have uh, concerned that, that sign. I mean, it's, it just seems like out of sorts for, for the, the area that it's in. I mean, it's not the Las Vegas Strip. It's a, it's a corner that has some smaller buildings. I just, it just seems like it overpowers what's going on. What changed? I, there was give and take, obviously, but what? where did you come to an agreement that this one's going to be okay? We didn't have anything to do with that. That was between the city that's, and, be a, and well, Bill. Well, you'll have time, Bill. Okay, that, that was... Yeah. But... but uh, I didn't Ultimately, learn. You do not like that sign still? Well, or? not particularly. Okay, thank you. Partly because of its size. Thank you. I mean, mainly. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of the application? In favor of the application, please come forward. Is there anyone here in opposition to the application? Please come forward. Brian gives your name and address. <laughs> Until starting. <laughs> Brian, Brian Miller, 3920 Leonard Drive. 
Um, I'll tell you later what this is. Ted was wrong, but I liked his idea, but it's, it's not what Ted said. This is the start of a redevelopment in this small business node. And uh, as you can see here in this picture, we have commercial here. We have a small commercial building here, church, 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 church down here, school over here. It's just a very small business note. And I don't expect it'll ever be much more than that. It'd take a lot to extend all the way to Merle Hay and stuff. So for now, this is just a small business note that looks like we may have the beginning of a turn. Here's another picture to give you an idea of the node. In yellow is, is the commercial. And as you can see, uh, it's all residential or, or church and school use. So this is a PUD. This is a concept only that's been presented to you. Re and at times, it was difficult for me as a commissioner to keep in mind that what I saw was a concept. A lot of times, what I saw, I thought was actually going to happen and was going to look like that. And oftentimes, it didn't. Uh, but with a PUD, it, it's awesome. They can do things that aren't normally allowed in the city, and you can require things or ask things of them to do differently. It's, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a carrot both ways. Uh, you know, uh, the area has, currently has small signage. That's directly uh, looking, uh, here, I'll move that down, east of the site. And you can see the small signs. And, and these are the common ones to pull. Everybody had a pole back then. So this is north of the site. That small sign apparently is going to go away because we're going to have an off-premise sign on their property that advertises the Ace Hardware too, kind of a, as an exchange for the purchase and everything else. Uh, across the street, directly to the west, is the old Goodrich Dairy Store. And then it, I think it was Shang Yen Chinese fast food that moved across the street, but it was a Chinese store. And it became uh, owned by Imperial Properties, as Joanne had uh, discussed and everything. And uh, all kinds of zoning issues happened there and stuff, and a lot of heartburn in the city. <laughs> across the street is Georgia Chili King. And I'm not suggesting that this is going to go away or that it's been there a long time, but, uh, but you, just, you just never know with an area like this. Uh, southwest of the site, there's a couple other small signs. There's a Dairy Queen there, uh, a small cleaners, and, uh, and a, a social agency. So with that, uh, we, we've already started talking about the signage on this site. And I was surprised when I saw it originally. Now on paper, that looks like a little sign. It doesn't look like very imposing to a neighborhood or anything. So I called Dan today to try to get scale on this and everything else. And how was I going to determine scale? And Dan's tall. So I even asked him, OK, who's the shortest person on the commission? But I hesitate to name a name. So I'm going to use Joanne as an as example. You know? jo Joanne has a kind heart, hard worker. And, and by the way, I'm here speaking as an individual. I am a member of this neighborhood as well as, as my own, but I'm not speaking as the president of my neighborhood or anything else other than just a citizen of Des Moines that loves redevelopment and loves to see that commercial engine in, in areas really start to spend money. So, so I really appreciate Joanne because she's always gotten things done. I see her at Des Moines Neighbors. I see her all over the place. So I thought for sure the city wasn't going to support it. So what did the city do? Hey, we like this sign. It's just about as tall, but it looks a lot worse. <laughs> um, you know, this is the one that's proposed to go over at Second and Euclid. So I'm going to have heartburn twice, apparently. <laughs> now, now, this is not uh, the corporate counsel for this uh, uh, company's fault or anything else. We've got the best of the best, as we all know here. But if we look at monument signs, this is what the plan and zoning has wanted, had the city has wanted, and everything else. There's a monument sign. That monument signs, uh, I think, pushing it, it'd be at the most 12 foot. Here's a Casey's gas station in the neighborhoods. That's a high traveled area. That's Beaver and Douglas. And look at how small that is compared to everything else. Here's the one that we approved across from Merle Hay Mall. That is an awesome Casey's that was approved in the old Garcia site. I mean, that, that was a long time coming. When the redevelopment happened at Merle Hay and Douglas, very high traffic thing, look what's on the corner. A monument sign, and it's not that big. Look at the car for scale. 
across the street from it on the Eichner property. Another monument sign, unique looking with character and everything else, but it's not very tall. Hardy's came uh, before uh, 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 Zoning Board of Adjustment not that long ago because of signage and everything else. That's a sign of their monument sign. Dan's taller than this sign. So maybe it's drugstores. They need huge signs that look like something that you'd have on a highway. So I looked at some drugstores. Now, this is not my drugstore choice, and CVS will be, and I'll finish up fast, Dan. So we'll, give, we'll give you a minute. But there's another one. So I'm thinking, maybe this is the only sign they do. Maybe this is the sign they want, size they want. Boy, go on the internet. Uh, I'll pass these around. There's an action going on right now, or I'll put one here. But there's a plan and zoning commission similar to yourself that's having heartburn about some of the CVS signs. The funny thing is, it's two of these signs, but one's only 11 foot tall and the other's 15. The 15 footer has a reader sign. This puppy makes those look tiny. So, what do we do about all this? Is this their plan? Is it, you know, and, and I looked at circulation, I looked at all these things, and you know, and some of this stuff didn't make sense, like the setback and everything else and stuff, but I thought, well, maybe apparently this is their plan, this is what they build, but it's not. If you Google site plans for CBS, you will find 20 or 30 different site plans. Notice this one's oriented Brian. different with a drive through in a different area. Brian. Notice, I'm almost done. This one's NPC. Look at this. It's up at the street. <laughs> and it didn't work. This one does not have circulation around it. This one, for, for Greg, has shrubbery along the building, right along the front facade. So, in closing, 30 seconds. regardless uh, of, of what's been brought before you, you can make a difference and you can make decisions and, and go forward. I ask you, though, the final plan needs to come back to you. You need to have suggestions to this developer or what needs to be done with this sign and other things. If the circulation is not right or anything else in your minds, give them suggestions and make the plan come back to you because the neighborhood des deserves to see the plan as well as you. I'm here for any questions unless you want to know what the 10 is. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Anyone else here to speak in opposition? the application. Seeing none, Bill, you want some time? I do. We'll attempt to be brief. Uh, Brian, I've not... That's, uh, that's okay. They overran for half. Well, no, no. We have, I hadn't uh, heard any of this until this evening, so Brian will be happy to uh, visit with him regarding some of the concerns he has. Uh, this is a major development. It's a major player in the city. They want to... Uh, uh, come here, and they're, uh, you've seen the one at 2nd and uh, Euclid. They have another one that uh, we just closed on on Southeast uh, 14th Street and uh, Park Avenue, and to rejuvenate this corner. We've had uh, at least two meetings with the uh, Merle Hay Neighborhood Board, and then we had a uh, meeting, uh, a neighborhood meeting, that was uh, well attended uh, at the uh, Polk County uh, Center. And we didn't really hear anybody objections. All we really heard were people that uh, wanted uh, this corner to be uh, uh, redeveloped. There are challenges as far as the geometry, candidly, uh, in order to trade the property with Mr. Margulies. And so uh, the trades and the contracts uh, to uh, give up some land, the access off of uh, uh, Merle Hay Road, and then in exchange for the property back here. So this is... Uh, uh, we think of a very, very nice plan. Uh, yes, it's a concept plan. Is it the detail plan? Sure, but we're 90% there in our opinion. We've dealt with the questions of traffic. We've dealt with the questions of, we need to deal with the questions of landscaping, fencing. Mr. Margulies has done, in my opinion, some things that he wouldn't have to do, but he uh, also wants this uh, project to happen and he wants to, frankly, make it look uh, attractive in comparison to what he presently has. So I think these are all pluses, and we sure would urge your support. Questions? Greg, you have something? Okay. Bill, I do have something. I, okay. I agree with Greg. I, I'm trying to figure out why this building, you have the other building, the Ace Hardware up there. Why can't you front it close to the Ace Hardware? You could put in that 
similar area that you have to the Ace Hardware, and it and it kind of makes it all look consistent. Well, uh, very candidly, in order for us to do this site, we had to buy land from Mr. Margulies. Mr. Margulies has a tenant there, uh, Ace Hardware, which is a very good tenant. They felt that if you move the, if you flipped it, and there was a discussion as to taking that to the front, uh, the uh, Ace Hardware said, uh, we don't want that. Mr. Margulies says, we don't want that. That would block uh, this area we had here someplace. I think probably shows it very vividly. It blocked that corner. And for them to put the store here rather than back in this area, and these lots, incidentally, are, there's one long lot, but these are platted to Holcomb and mm -hmm. platted over here to the next number. And, and Bill, I understand that, but what I'm, I'm not suggesting you front it to the street. I'm suggesting if you, you make it consistent with the Ace Hardware, which wouldn't block the view of the Ace Hardware, and all you're doing is, truthfully, the ugliest part of that is that... Dan, that try you're not listening. Yeah. All right. The owner of the Ace Hardware site says no. We can't. Dan, we had to, particularly as, as far as easements are concerned, and the trade of the access off of Merle Hay, and they said if uh, if we move that building candidly any closer to the corner, we don't have a deal. Okay. And that's, that's unfortunately, that's uh, what we dealt with. So we felt that we've been able to solve the questions of the neighbor and to hopefully enhance the development of a very, very nice building. So, Jim. Ted. I have a question for staff. Um, are, we, are we approving the sign design this evening with this? You're being asked to, yes. He said yes. Anything else, Bill? I don't think so. We okay. welcome questions, but to answer your question regarding the sign, okay. yes, that's consistent yeah. with what uh, we had, had for, approved. Uh, at, uh, for clarification, you're making a recommendation to the council. That's right. So the council ultimately will decide whether or not to approve the sign in the PUD. Any other questions? Thank you. And you I'm going to close... I'm sorry, you don't have any trouble with any of the other staff recommendations? No, we agree with staff recommendations. There are four items, and we worked with the traffic, and uh, so the four items uh, are, uh, we agree with staff. I'm going to close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Uh, Joanne? I'd like to move it. I have no problem with any of it except that sign. Okay. I would like to amend the fact that, I mean, let's put it in perspective. This room is almost 20 foot tall. You want to sign that high? That's gargantuan in my in my uh, estimation. I, I don't think the sign should be any higher than um, what has been noted as standard around here. Ten feet. Ten feet. Ten feet is the maximum for a monument sign. Then it should be the maximum should be eight feet. I find that 22 feet is absolutely imposing. It's it does nothing for the design of the building. So I'd like to um, put the maximum for that sign at eight feet. Okay. In item number Anything? two. Under this yeah, I'd like to amend number two then. Okay. Could, could, could you accomplish the same thing by approving everything, but asking that any freestanding standing sign uh, design shall be returned to the group for discussion and approval, or do you want to? I mean, I'm question to Joanne. Mm -hmm. I would like to put a limit on it, unless there is more information from the rest of you. Uh, Joanne, if I may, I uh, don't want to talk you out of your motion, but, um, but. I would be comfortable if if we um, referred it back to staff to maybe take another look at the at the design with the focus on making it not quite as tall, not quite as massive. Not quite um, can be just up to the top of the windows. Which what is it? Well, have I, eight? you know, I I, I think. I think there are probably other signs in town that are taller than eight feet monument signs. There's probably well, ten and twelve foot. Didn't we just hear? What did you have to say? Ten and twelve foot. 
I were the taller ones? 10 and 12 foot were the taller ones that you? About 10 foot was the tallest one. So we, I mean, where are we at? Friendly amendment. Yeah. I mean, I'd take 12 feet. That's still 10 feet short. No. Yeah, no kidding. So you, are you good with 12 or 10 or what? Um, I'd like 12, okay. 10 if they, everybody's having a, you know, hair raising problem with it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 10 would, would be what I would say. Well, that's her, it's her motion, so yeah. it's going to change. Do you mind, it. guys, if I said 12 or 10, I mean? I, I like a little flexibility because um, it is designed that they need okay. to work on too. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to okay. say 10 to 12. I don't know what Greg, did you have something you want to bring up? Yeah, I, I think everyone probably already knows my position on this, but, um, and, and I thoroughly appreciate the fact that the neighborhood is in support of this. I thoroughly appreciate the fact that the seller um, has put a restriction on uh, where this building goes, but I don't think that that is germane to this site plan. I really don't. Um, I think this solution by putting, I mean, First of all, everyone's sort of glomming onto this sign, but the reason the sign's 22 feet is because the building's 150 feet away. So, you know, the, the fundamental problem here is the building should be up near the corner, not where it's located. Um, there should not be a detention pond up on the corner of this intersection. Um, I, I think this plan is absolutely backwards. There's examples in town. There's Walgreens on Ingersoll, uh, the Ace, I don't remember what it was before, over there in, on Beaverdale. Other examples of where you can put a building up, and in fact, there are a few examples, I think, shown by the other gentleman. Um, I'm not sure what else to say other than that I absolutely cannot support this layout. I don't think it's about signage. I think the building's in the wrong spot. I'd be happy to discuss it with anyone who have any, wants to talk about it. Any other discussion? Yes, I have an... Um, I well. want to have an answer to my question that I raised earlier during the public hearing about the electronic or the LED mm. message boards. Yeah, the city does regulate uh, electronic message boards. Uh, basically, it applies, I believe, to anything over 24 square feet. And uh, it's basically uh, subject to our electronic sign regulations, which the commission reviewed and council approved. Um, there's nothing prohibiting it. I mean, we have numerous schools in residential districts that have electronic signs for messages for schools out today, pick up, et cetera. Um, this is a C2 commercial district along a US Highway 6, runs along Hickman and then turns and goes up Merle Hay Road. Um, so as far as the, the standard zoning would not prohibit a, uh, a message board on this on this site. And so we did not recommend a, a limit on that. Uh, is the regulation in terms of the speed of the action of movement changing the size? <coughs> I don't know who brought that up. Yeah. On uh, billboards, for example, electronic billboards, there are, are limits on uh, change of message on a billboard. There's a little bit more flexibility on the change of message on a, on a copy sign such as this. And, and that's the question I raised because they're very distracting um, and it's a safety hazard. And I re respectfully request R and O uh, to look into this matter and see if something could come up to regulate the speed of action because it's a very distracting um, element on busy highways. Greg, you want to talk about that or? No, I think we looked at it before, but we can look at it again. Yeah, and I, and I would say because I was on. Planning and zoning. When we looked at it the last time, we had a number. As a matter of fact, Brian was one of the people that was involved in that too, and we had a number of uh, elements about how quickly the sign should change. And and I, frankly, I can't remember specifically what we had, but I know we we set a time limit. I can't can't remember what it is. And frankly, it may not affect this particular sign, as Mike's saying. That help will. I'm sure it yes, doesn't. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask for a friendly amendment, uh, Joanne, and, and it has nothing to do with, with the um, motion itself. It has to do with bringing this uh, plan back to us before final approvals, but I ask that we add. I would go with that, yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Any other questions? 
I, I was just wondering, can you hear? Uh, <laughs> Get the eyes from our boss. <laughs> that the uh, south elevation of this building has a 33 and a half foot long sign on what appears to be about an eight foot high uh, bed. And that is duplicated on the uh, west elevation. And um, I would hope our consumers wouldn't be confused that this is a CVS location with um, 133.7 square feet of signage on each of the two road facing facades. Right. Any other discussion? Thanks, Jack. Uh, I think I'm going to break this down. Um, first of all, we'll, uh, whether or not this is in conformance with the 2020 Community Character Plan, I think staff said it's not, right? Correct. Uh, staff's indicated that it's not. Um, you're making that motion, right, Joanne? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of staff's recommendation, please signify by raising Is everybody clear? No. All right. A. Staff says this is A. Whether or not it's proposed is in conformance. The rezoning is in conformance with the 2020 Community Character Plan. Existing. Existing one. And it is not, an is what staff's saying. Okay. So all those in favor of staff's recommendation, please signify by raising your right hand. CJ? Greg? Are you? Okay, acclamation. I just want to make sure everybody was on board. All right, now that passes, and then we'll move to item number B, which is to amend the community community, ugh, community development department community character plan. I'm sorry, uh, to revise it. Um, everybody understand that, Joanne? I'm assuming you're doing that too, right? Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Okay, Greg's in opposition. Then rezoning the property uh, from R160 and C1 to PUD. Um, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. I'm assuming this is Joanne again, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I think it's acclamation. Are you against that, Greg? Yes. Greg's against it. Greg's I am it. also. And okay, so Christine. And, oh, CJ's against it. Okay, I'm sorry. Christine, so CJ. Three. Three. Three, Three no's. The last one is approval of a PUD conceptual plan to allow redevelopment. Joanne, I'm assuming that's your motion as well. <laughs> yeah. And then it would come back to us even afterwards is, is, is the amendment. All those in favor of the approval, please signify by raising your right hand. All right. We're looking at D now. I'm sorry. We're looking at D. All right. It's approval of the PUD conceptual plan to allow redevelopment of 2.38 acres for 12,900 square feet, one story pharmacy and general retail store with two lane drive through window and 84 off street parking spaces. Everybody got that? I'm sorry, I'm rushing here on it. That's Joanne's motion, right. With, no. with, the addition, no. with the addition that it would come back to us for final approval. And and, two. and the sign, right. Yeah. So a 10 to 12 foot monument sign and P and Z approval or review of the final development plan. Right. right. Yeah. Everybody got that? I'm sorry. I've kind of, nobody, do we have any other questions, concerns? Um, I, I guess I better state what I'm thinking. Um, I guess in thinking about this particular corner, I was just really excited when I, when I read this plan and to know that something was finally, somebody was going to take the initiative to really clean this up. Because for years, you know, I drive by there spring, summer, fall, and people set up their independent little thing selling shoes and you name it, they sell it on that corner. And to me, it this is just such a huge improvement over what we have there, folks. And the part that I object to, and I know we're approving all of it with the exception of the sign, but what I'm hearing Bill say and Brian say and, the, and Joanne, the neighborhood person say, is that they will work together on this sign. So for us to deny it and then have the thing come all the way back, it's just a whole lot of time. I think a lot of time that is lost there in 
doing that particular process. I can understand your concerns about the size of the sign, but I don't really think that it's anything that between the staff and the neighborhood and those, you know, those powers that be, I think they can work that out. I guess I just trust, I just trust that they will. Sure, surely what they're saying is it will come back before before us for final approval. We've done that on a number of locations. That's what that's what they're talking about, not on the sign issue itself, but the, the whole development. Could we, can we ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Do you have a question, Bill? Yeah, I do. I want, to be sure, I want to be sure that I understand what the, what the recommendation would be. Uh, if you're, are you saying that the concept plan would come back to you for, for final approval? approval? Yeah. But the you final could, development plan. Final, de final development right, plan. But right. you could go forward with the zoning because right. we have the, we're under a real strict timeline right. of contracts. So the, the zoning goes forward, the final concept plan comes back, and uh, yes, that's that's fine with us. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and it, we, it's been we, done a number of times. Okay. You've been yeah, on we understand. And we'd like to be able to work with uh, Joanne and Jason and uh, the staff regarding the sign questions. I think this is the first time that I've been here. I think I hear you loud and clear regarding the sign, and hopefully we could come up with something that would be okay. mutually agreeable. Thank you. That's okay. That answers my question. Does everybody understand the motion now? I'm sorry. I rushed through it. I shouldn't have. Okay. All those in favor? Staff's recommendation, please signify by raising your right as hand. As amended. As amended, as amended, right, as amended. Please, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Three, let's three. Four? No, three. three. One, two, three. Okay, all right. It passes. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, next item is uh, number nine. We can, we passed number eight by consent. Uh, number nine is a request from PE LLC, represented by Phil Ebert, to rezone property located at 1734 East University Avenue and 13. I'm sorry, 1213 East 17th Court. Additional subject property is owned by EP Company LLC. First of all, to determine whether or not the proposed rezoning's conformance with the 2020 Community Development the Community Character Plan, amend the 2020 Community Character Plan to revise the future land use designation from low to medium density residential to general industrial, and then rezone the property from C1 neighborhood retail commercial to M1 light industrial district to allow a custom retail carpentry and mill workshop and office involving outdoor storage of contra contractor vehicles and job trailers. Jason, you're presenting on behalf of this one? Yes. Thank you, sir. Chair, members of the commission, we got an aerial identifying the subject property on the East University Avenue corridor, the north side, the corner of East 17th and Court. Photograph, once the camera comes into focus. It's always the staff. Can we get on manual? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, subject property looking back to the north and to the east. Uh, the parking area, the building that's on this uh, site. You can see a little further to the, um, oh, this picture shows that. The, the applicant currently operates and owns a business in, in this uh, property here, neighboring property. Response map, cars going around. With this one, I'm just going to, as Dan alluded to in reading the the agenda heading, the applicant is looking to do a cabinet and mill workshop here as, as well as uh, some office functions. Um, the, that in itself doesn't uh, require uh, M1. It's the outdoor storage of contractor trailers um, that makes the M1 zoning necessary. Um, 
the staff, we, we have concerns um, with M1 zoning in this area. Um, it doesn't um, comply with the, land, the future land use designation for, for starters. But more importantly, looking at the character and the surrounding zoning and kind of the vision for this area, this is more of a, a highway commercial area. Given that, uh, we are comfortable as staff recommending approval of an amended request of CU2 zoning subject to the a couple conditions, basically prohibiting a, a, a list of, of uses um, that we feel don't fit at this location and that um, any reuse of the property that's uh, a use that's not permitted in the C1 district shall require a site plan is approved by the Permit Development Center. So in essence, you know, we just want to make sure that if it's an intense development that the site's being brought back into conformance. They have some established rights. So that is staff report in a nutshell. Okay, Jason, you're, you're recommending as opposed to M1 it be C2? That's correct. So it, Limited C2. Correct. Okay. okay. Any questions? Thank you. Is the applicant present? Cut. Jason, real quick, can you explain a little bit more about where the trailers go? And uh, I think I uh, assume I know, but there's no uh, site the plan. The building right? is right here, and okay. then they have a parking area. Um, we don't have a site sketch. The applicant might be able to kind of talk through what their game plan was in developing this site where they'd park trailers and stuff. But outdoor storage of trailers in and of itself, um, to get a zoning district that allows that, you have to switch up to M1. None of our commercial zoning districts allow it. And staff's okay with the visibility of those? Well, we're recommending denial. We're saying C2, which would not allow the outdoor storage. So to, that's a good question. I just want to clarify. Yeah. This, we're, we're okay with rezoning this you know, to a C2. It would allow the, most of the operations of what they're proposing. It's, the, um, it's that outdoor storage component that we're not comfortable with. If they were to come back to you with a design site plan that showed how they'd screen them or something, would you, would staff entertain that? I don't believe so. I mean, if looking at the, like I said, the game plan for this corridor and the, how it should develop in the future, this isn't a, an area for M1 zoning. You know, certainly, you know, the, I think the ideas that you're going down are more or less something that maybe a zoning board adjustment would look at, not a, a rezoning. Okay. Yeah. Is the applicant present? Please come forward. Give your name and address. I'm Phil Ebert, Ebert Painting, uh, owner of the property at 1734 East University. I uh, live at 4235 Northeast 3rd Street. I, uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that would be my intent to use the building. The building's sitting there needing some attention and I'd like to utilize the building and put a spray shop in there to paint architectural woodwork. As far as the outdoor storage, I don't, I personally don't have any intent to store trailers, ladders, or anything out there. There's just not enough room out there to, to develop the, the site. Uh, but I think on occasion there might be a paint van or something parked overnight. So Mr. Ebert, Mr. Yeah. Ebert, do you want to withdraw this and maybe talk to staff about bringing it back under a different type of zoning? Um, because you understand, you understand no, that no. zoning runs with the land. So whatever you put on there might be all right, but what the next person may come along and do is want to run M1 type, type uses on that. You understand? And I understand that. And I, okay. I'm because of that, then I'd be willing to go with the recommendation of the staff. And, and if you would approve C2, that would that would fulfill that would fulfill what I would need. I, I have, I've discussed it with them, and I I, I haven't. Okay. You know, if I if I parked a van overnight, it wouldn't be like That's parking a truck, and it wouldn't be an every night deal. I I wouldn't have a fenced in storage for ladders on that property, and okay. I I just don't visualize doing it using that for my purposes. Great. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Please come forward in favor of the application. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? as it currently stands, which would be C2. In opposition to the application, please come forward. Anybody have a question about whether or not you want to come forward? Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Move staff. And move staff, which is the C2 zoning. First of all, we have to go, um, let's, let's take the, uh, for whether or not it's uh, in conformance with 2020 community character plan, and the answer is that it's not. So you're going to move the first one, right? Mm -hmm. So all those in favor of the staff recommendation, which it is not in conformance, please signify by raising your right hand. Post same sign acclamation, Kathy. And then amend it. Uh, I think we can do both together, right? Amend and, and make, the C, make it C2. Mm -hmm. So we can, we're going to go ahead and amend and make it C2. Christine, you're moving that one again. Yes. Sir. All right. All, everybody understand the motion? I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. All right. Is everybody okay with this? All right. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. C2. Opposed, same sign. Acclamation again, Ken. Okay, it passes. It'll be C2. Thank you. Moving on to uh, item number 10. It's a request from George Clayton to review for review and approval of a site plan for extension of parking into residential district on property located at 5311 Southwest 9th Street to allow a 3,365 square feet expansion of a paid parking lot for auto repair use on a split zoned parcel into the adjoining R160 district. Jason, you're presenting on this one, sir? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Ariel, uh, identifying the subject property on the uh, northeast corner of Southwest 9th and uh, Kenyon Avenue. You can see, one thing I want to point out, is the lot is split zone. That blue line represents the zoning uh, break. Response map. Whoops, excuse me. This is the Southwest 9th, or, uh, the front of the site. And then the list is looking at the site towards the west, uh, the rear area. Technology went away really well. It's, well it's not That's a fan of me tonight, apparently. <laughs> so here's the site plan that's been submitted. It's under review. Uh, you have the buildings up by 9th, uh, some parking area up in this area. The zoning line separating the C2 zoning from the R160. Uh, and then the parking lot improvements back in this area. Um, in, in looking at this, um, in putting together the staff report, and, uh, and I'm sure that you know, I don't, don't want to, I'm not going to read it and repeat what you've seen, but um, we had some concern with regard to this building. It has lost its rights for use uh, for commercial. Um, that's part of this. This site is before you partially because you know they're trying to bring it conformance. But uh, with this being R160, we kind of have a staggered um, recommendation. Um, in our pre-app, we had discussed with the applicant about rezoning the whole site to C2, getting rid of this issue with this non-conforming use, and given that. We're recommending that either the commission um, approve the site plan subject to this building being removed um, and compliance with all administrative review comments, or if the applicant would prefer um, that they uh, seek to rezone the property if they prefer to keep the building. So in that case, the, we would actually recommend denial of the site plan and then ask them to move forward with rezoning. So I'll be happy to answer your questions. Jason, can you throw that, uh, that picture up again? I, because I'm looking at the um, contour lines on that, and his, his parking is going to be straight downhill. Yeah. Am I wrong? I mean. Yeah, <laughs> if you, so we have uh, 904, 903, so it's dropping a foot. Pretty, pretty dramatically. Wow. It's, um, Do you know if they're required to have um, handicapped parking on their parking lot? 
I think they um, are. They are, and actually they're showing it over here by the building. That's the only place they could put it because everything else is yeah, not going to make the slope. Yeah, I kind of some flat area in this vicinity. So, but you are right, the contours kind of push back this way. And, and you look at the pictures and that, I mean, visually that makes sense. And you can see that it's kind of flat over against the buildings and slopes down the way. Okay. Thank you. Yep. There are any other questions? Joanne? Yeah, we also didn't want to use this extra building that is on here at all. Um, I understand that the business that they, the tenant that they're working with, intends just to use this building, but they have been using this for other storage. Um, I don't want to, other than passing that information on to you, I'd prefer to let them kind of speak through what their game plan is. Um, but I believe the tenant that they're trying to locate in this building at this time is more focused on the primary building. Mike Jason. Jason, and just to clarify, I believe the applicant was advised at the pre-application meeting to rezone the property. That's that is correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Yep. The applicant, please come forward, give us your name and address. My name is George Michael Clayton. I live at 14455 University Avenue in Waukee, Iowa. And I acquired this building oh, probably six, eight months ago. And with the idea that it would make an ideal mechanical shop for auto repair. And it's set up just absolutely, the building is set up very, very well for it. Um, the problem that we ran into is because I own the, the whole parcel. There's two parcels. It's a split parcel. Uh, the, 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 there's a small segment on the rear end that is zoned R160 and as a result of that I met with staff and uh, uh, we talked about a rezoning. I have tenants, they're here tonight, very two, ni are nice, are two nice young men that, uh, that are currently uh, mechanics and uh, so in a matter for, uh, for the point of urgency, the quickest way to allow them to get in and start operating would be to, I talked to staff, it would be to uh, get the extension into the R160 since I own both parcels anyway and get the parking enlarged. And I told uh, Ryan Moffat at the time, I had no problem in coming back to you folks and asking to have the, pro the property rezoned. But in, in, you know, for purposes of expediency, I would hope that, you know, you would go ahead and approve the expansion. Uh, it's a small expansion into the R160 area so I can make the improvements. The whole idea here is that we intend to really make this corner a lot more attractive. Uh, we're going to rehab the building, as the exterior, uh, we're going to have landscaping, we're improving the, the corner tremendously uh, from an aesthetic point of view, plus providing a, a bona fide service for the, for the neighborhood in, in terms of auto repair. Um, if you would go ahead and approve the extension into the residential for my expanded parking, we can go ahead with our improvements and I will come back to you uh, at a later date and ask for a rezoning. And well, I, met, how, I met with Sue Donovan. For, uh, forgive, forgive me for interrupting, but, but how is it expedient to come before us for this when you could have come before us for the zoning? I was told that it would take a longer period of time to do the rezoning on it. Basically, uh, Sue Donovan talked with the applicant today, and uh, as long as they agree not to use that existing storage building for any use, she was comfortable with you going ahead and reviewing and approving the site plan for extension of the parking. They would have to follow up with a rezoning application for the re this R160 portion. If that is not successful, they would be required to take the building down. Yes, and the, the tenants are not going to be using that storage yeah. building anyway. So they're not going to have access to it. Site plan review is about a 30-day process versus a rezoning is about a 90-day process. So, okay. And they're waiting they're to utilize the building as quickly as possible. And we'd like to go ahead and start making the improvements on the exterior of the building and the landscaping and so forth and the parking. I just see your whole parking situation as a nightmare. You've got a building there that's taking up what could potentially be parking and then you've got a 
parking area that drops off like a stone. He's doing a retaining wall. I think we can make that work. I have the architect here this evening. Okay. Yeah. Any, any questions? Any, sorry. Oh, are you okay with removing that building? Is that a problem? I prefer not to. I mean, it's a, we're going to reface the, the, those storage buildings and, and make it much more attractive. And if uh, we will not use it until you folks have an opportunity to explore that avenue and consider the rezoning. I think the city would prefer to have, it's really, uh, the city would prefer to have the whole parcel zone C2 rather than just to have a split situation there because the residential section is so small, it's really not usable anyway. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have anything else? No, okay. I don't. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to open the public hearing. All those in favor of the application, please come forward, give us your name and address. Are you sure? You don't know? <laughs> well, since there's nobody else coming forward in favor, we'll, we'll take both next. How's that sound? Um, my name is Sam Erickson. I'm the Vice President of Community Housing Initiatives. We're located at 500 East Locust. Do I have to give all that, or is that just city council? You're good. All right, okay. Um, it, I, we are here to actually say that, that we do support and we do understand that it will be an improvement as somebody who hits stuff with her car a lot. You know, that's that's great. We're, <laughs> we're all for auto repair. Um, we would just like to support the rezone to C2 to make sure that we have a buffer zone to the residential area. <laughs> Um, I believe two years ago our company acquired some Des Moines public housing units, uh, one of which is north of the property that we're discussing. We did a complete remodel and rehabilitation. I hope you've all seen them. They turned out great. Uh, we want to make sure, though, that that's a marketable area for us. Um, we did take over some properties in areas that are hard to market from a rental perspective. We want to make sure that they stay family friendly, so we'd like to just support the rezone for the entire property to make sure that we have a good landscaping plan and that and that we have a proper buffer between our properties. Any questions? Maybe just one for Mike or staff. So staff's okay with if they never use the storage building and in other words leave it the C2R160, Sue's okay, everyone's okay if they just never use it and never come back? The condition that we recommended was that it needs to be removed. If it's if they don't take any steps to rezone that, we would proceed with enforcement and request that, that the accessory structure so be So does removed. that mean there's an inherent duration of time, or what's that mean? Yeah, I'll leave it up to Sue Donovan, okay. the zoning enforcement officer, right. on how long she wants to give them, but they've indicated they it is their intent to apply for rezoning. Okay. Any other, Tim? Yeah, I, I guess... Uh, you represent one home that's around that business? You represent just one home? Are there any other homes that we reached out to in the immediate area or any response? I, I noticed what I got out for the site plans. Okay. And nothing came back. Just that. Yeah, we don't mail out a one card one. on site plans. Oh, no. No. Okay. okay. All right. I see. But I thought it's a, a zoning change. That, that, that they will have to get a yes. card in that. Okay. I got it. All right. I, I too, being us on that side of uh, the river, would like to see that building gone. You know. Okay, yeah. yeah, and not, you know, if, uh, a, a handshake on a deal is a, a, a pretty nice thing to have, but I just would hate to say, yeah, go ahead with it, and all of a sudden it just gets lost in the fray. We know how hard it is for zoning right now to take care of issues that we have existing. Mm -hmm. So that's just my thought on that. <clears throat> okay. Anyone to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward in opposition. Seeing none, you need a rebuttal time? <laughs> It is, it is our intent to make this corner attractive. I know that the building's been sitting vacant for a period of time, and we're going to redo the exterior of the building. Uh, the landscaping is going to be very attractive. We're going to have adequate trees and shrubbery and fencing and everything to comply with uh, the city requirements. 
And uh, this is going to be a viable business that will serve the community in that area. So we think it's going to be a nice addition to the corner. And uh, the neighbors, uh, we've already made contact with the neighbors and the houses surrounding there. They're in favor of it. Um, so what else can I say, ladies and gentlemen? We're Thank trying you. to make an improvement. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Joanne? Ahead, but I do want to have some questions first. Um, if we go to a C2, does he have to remove the storage building? It'll come back to you if, for the rezoning consideration. And if it was C2 rezoned, no, he would not have to remove the building. Okay. So where does that... Uh, we're just doing site. So we're just doing site plan right now without regard to the... Zoning. Zoning. Mm -hmm. you're, okay, extend, yeah. you're extending okay. the... You're extending parking into the area that's now C1. Right. All right. I, I mean, uh, R1. R1, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I would go ahead and approve or uh, go with staff's recommendation. However, I would like to add, I'd like it stated that there'll be no car sales from the property. No auto sales from the property. Other than that, It's her motion. You made the motion? It's her motion. Yeah. I have a question about your motion. Yeah. What I don't see in the staff recommendation is what I heard someone say that uh, Sue was okay with the verbiage on the site plan, the no use in this building. I don't think that's reflected in the staff recommendation, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's not written here. It says removed. I know, but what I heard Sue say is that the building could stay, or someone said she said, that the it building could stay. In the interim. In the interim, interim right. while they process a zoning that's not app. That's what I'm saying. Right. You just say staff mm -hmm. recommendation, that's not here. Did I confuse that? Yeah, I think it's implied that it's, it's up to her to enforce the removal of the building, and so she's willing to give them time and stay any enforcement on removal of the building pending them coming in with a site plan. That is what she told them today. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to revise the condition, you are more than like, more than able to. We'll do that, Joanne. The, the, the one question I do have about the motion is about the auto sales, though. This isn't a zoning, so I'm not certain that you can restrict on a site plan uh, uses that are allowed by C2 zoning. I think the appropriate time to look at that is if you're going to rezone additional property to C2. Okay. All right. Then look at putting those restrictions on the zoning okay. for the whole property. Then I'll move staff. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Acclimate. Tim, Tim's good. Tim's in. He's vacillating. I just have so many questions. All right. Moving on to item number 11, is a request from Miguel Salcedo to rezone property at 1161 22nd Street. By the way, I, I should have said it passed. Uh, to rezone the property at 1161 22nd Street, the subject property is owned by Mac Investment Group, LLC. Uh, first of all, determine whether or not the proposed rezoning is conformance with the 2020 Community C Character Plan. And I believe staff's recommendation is it's not amend to 2020 community character plan to revise the future land use designation from low to medium density residential to high density residential. And then rezone the property from R160 one family low density residential to R4 multiple family residential district. Jason, you presenting on this one? Yes, uh, Chair, members of the commission, Ariel, before you identifying the subject property University Avenue, uh, it's just to the south on 22nd Street. The property zoned R160, as it was noted. Um, it had uh, at one time been, it was originally constructed as a single family dwelling, they don't like it. been uh, divided into nine units. It's lost its grandfathering rights, it's been vacant for an extended period of time. The applicant uh, is proposing to convert it to a five unit building. response map and the cards are going around. 
we have the percentage based upon the returns of the? I don't believe we've met the threshold okay. yet, but we may still get more cards. All right. But we're getting, that's a good point. We were getting close there. Um, in looking at this, uh, you know, we've gone through it and, you know, evaluated it from the community character plan. Uh, we've also looked at, you know, the proposed density. Uh, and, and then also uh, reviewing the recent, um, mo the more recent Drake neighborhood plan and the goals in that plan, but also prior to that, there was an effort uh, that the city participated jointly with the neighborhood on down zoning a good portion of the Drake neighborhood, including this area. Um, from a lot of R3 to R160, there is still some R3 um, and that was done intentionally to respect buildings that were originally constructed as multifamily versus buildings such as this where it was a single family house on a smaller lot that had been chopped up over time. So putting that all together in the, um, the goals of the neighborhood plan, the city's comprehensive plan, uh, and then also looking at the constraints of the site with regard to lot area, uh, staff is recommending denial of the request. Any questions? Thank you, Jason. Yep. We get the applicants forward. The applicants here. Doesn't look like it. I, I will say that we were expecting communication from them that they were going to request continuous because they didn't have the neighborhood meeting. We never received it, so we assumed that they were wanting to move forward. Um, so I don't know if that uh, went into them not showing up or not there is was there any suggestion made to them that we were going to continue this i don't believe so i think we put them on notice that they needed to be here i know that in talking to the i just want to make sure that they don't come back in and say oh the staff didn't tell me you guys are bad people because they do right. that all the time. The, the only thing I would, yeah, well, we are bad <laughs> Let me just, yeah. there's nothing preventing somebody well, from I, saying I, that. I, but. I realize that, but I just want to be on firm footing this time. I, 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 I do want, um, I do want to say that there has been. <laughs> I'm sorry, that really. <laughs> I think here, here, this would be the suggestion <laughs> is um, you, you can decide if you want to continue, if you want to go ahead and take action on the recommendation tonight, you can do so. It will still have a hearing in front of the city council, uh, and so, you know, they can they can explain at the city council meeting if they could or couldn't be here. Council can refer it back if they want to at that time. What a what a denial recommendation from the commission does do though, it does trigger a six seventh vote of the city council to approve yeah. the zoning. Let's uh, let's uh, go ahead and go forward unless there's. I'd had one question. Greg, um, is there an area around Drake where this type of housing would be permitted? Well, in general terms, the, the Drake neighborhood plan is really pushing to have density along their major corridors, University, Forest Avenue, yeah. and, and buildings designed for multifamily use. So there, there are areas appropriate in the neighborhood. It, it's, it's more challenging in these areas where you have this historic, uh, what was a house on a small lot, where do you put the parking? Where do you put the trash enclosure? How, you know, it's people parking on the street. You know, there's just a lot of challenges. So this isn't an area that it makes sense. So there really wouldn't be anywhere where this would would be acceptable to staff? Well, this well, type I, of housing? Well, I, I, if you're asking could multifamily be developed here? Well, I mean, a house has five apartments in it. Is there anywhere around Drake that this could happen? I, it's hard to know without having something come forward that we can analyze. I mean, you could make the case that, you know, perhaps there's a, a, a property that, you know, maybe is on a very large lot that had, you know, there's some different things that maybe you could make a case there. Good. Um, but it, that's, without seeing the facts, it's hard for us to take a position. But I think it's pretty clear the neighborhood plan, though, has, has said they want to reduce density of this type where it's been a single family house that was carved up into multiple units okay. as non-conforming rights are, are expire and um, when rezonings are considered. Are okay, <clears throat> since the applicant's not present, I'm just gonna go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Please come forward. Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? Please come forward. Sir, if you 
Come on up and give us your name and address. Sure, I uh, didn't know if uh, we'd get to speak today, but uh, um, yeah, Derek Gord, uh, President of Drake Neighborhood Association, uh, 2422 Drake Park. We are not in favor of this in answer to the question. Uh, yes, there are places where we are aiming to have uh, developments that are going to be multifamily, and that is not on the residential streets. It's on the major corridors like University or Forest Avenue. That's why the Neighborhood Association has been in favor of um, built as multifamily developments on those corridors. And we have been consistently opposed to taking these houses that were cut up and then changed to the R160, became non-conforming, allowing those to go back into the multifamily. Um, we have always stood against that because that goes against the entire plan of the neighborhood. It goes against the plan of uh, where we want to go. These houses were not designed for that. I, I think everybody here knows that. So um, we, I, I did actually have a, um, a lady, Carmen, showed up at my door on Sunday at, at about 11.30 or something like that uh, last Sunday to uh, talk about this, uh, saying that she represented the um, person that wanted to buy the property, saying that you know none of these big houses could ever be turned into a single family again. When I pointed out that my house had, in fact, been a multifamily house that we had downsized, and the houses across the street that had all been downsized, <coughs> she just insisted, well, this is very different. Um, th this house has a, a certain reputation, which I won't get into. I, I think for many reasons, we should not do that. And I think there are pe people here that can probably speak better to that than I can. So I will. Before you leave, any questions? Ted. Um, I'm guessing you have a pretty favorable audience up here for your position on this. But um, is, is there a reasonable expectation that an 8,400 square foot house is going to be converted to a single family? Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, it, it, it happens. I mean, it, if you look at the house, and I, I wish we could actually put these up, you know, it, it, we, I can't point to specific houses. Yeah. But if we look at, at a house uh, directly across the street from me, uh, 1125th Street or 1102, I believe it is, 25th Street, both of those were equally the size of this. My house is around 1,900 square feet. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, maybe closer to 2,000. And it was a chopped up multifamily that is now comfortably mm -hmm. a uh, single family. Sure. With replace, you know, with standard replacement uh, using good weatherizing, you know, that there's talk about, oh, the, you can never, you know, the electric bills are going to be impossible. Um, but I think if you have good standards mm -hmm. on how you use storm windows, on how you insulate, perfectly acceptable as a a uh, single family house. Yes, that's great. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Please step forward, give us your name and address. <clears throat> Please bear with me, I'm having troubles speaking. I'm Frank Affinato. I live at 1128 22nd Street in Des Moines. Uh, that's where my house is. <clears throat> in, in the last several years, that neighborhood has been cleaned up and it's become a very nice place. Uh, two houses in the last year have been converted from, I think, five units to one. Another one, I think, was 10 units, close to that, to one. <clears throat> and the improvement has been uh, unbelievable. Uh, the appearance and everything else has been getting me ashamed so that I'm gonna get my house all painted this spring. <clears throat> but. Uh, to take these old houses and make apartments out of them, the best you can get is slum-type apartments. You don't get decent apartments. That building caught fire some years ago, and someone made the mistake of calling the fire department. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it's seven units now. They want to reduce it to five, and it's still going to be slum apartments. We don't need that. And uh, since the neighborhood has been improved so much, please do not send it back in the, in the direction that we don't want to go. We're going the right direction right now. People that have 
converted these other units from multi-units to single-family homes have done a marvelous job of it, and I want to see that continued. Thank you. Thank you. Please come forward, give us your name and address. I'm Trevor Williams, 2128 uh, University, and I'm the COO of Des Moines Building and Land. Uh, we have, uh, we own 2128 University. That was uh, 10 apartments that we converted back to a single family house. That is our office and my personal residence. That was 5,000 square feet, uh, 90 days, 88 people. So uh, to say it's unreasonable to do 5,000 feet, is, it's not unreasonable for us. Uh, 1131, 22nd, that was uh, five units. That was 67 days, 35 people, single family. So um, that was a density reduction of uh, 15 units, uh, several hundred thousand dollars spent uh, to alleviate the neighborhood of that tremendous amount of congestion. Uh, at one point, that was, in our opinion, a, basically an urban highway for drug traffic and prostitution. Primarily out of 2128, 1161, which is the property in question, and 1131, 22. So it is our position, our formal position, that any redevelopment that should take place at 1161, 22nd Street should be limited to a duplex, uh, potential renovation of the existing property, which in our uh, professional opinion is going to be very challenging due to, as Frank said, the tremendous amount of burn damage or a, a demolition of the property in a traditional single family house that uh, better now suits uh, the character of the neighborhood. And that is single families, uh, tremendous amounts of reduction in the tra uh, traffic on the street and also parking on the street. You cannot drive down the street without having to weave in and out of cars and, and so on. So that, uh, that's our position. Stand. Any questions? Questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Come forward, give us your name and address. My name is Bill Capuccio, 1084 24th Street. I'm the chair of Drake Park Neighbors. Uh, the 22nd Street uh, area is also in the Drake Park Neighbors uh, uh, um, territory. Uh, and uh, I, I, I totally agree with everybody else is saying. We've uh, seen tremendous change in the area. Uh, the kinds of development we want to see are the kinds of development that Trevor and his uh, uh, business partners are doing and is making a uh, market change. In addition to the uh, downsizing that they've done, Within the last, I'm going to conservatively say 10 years, we've seen a number of other uh, properties go from, uh, we've had one other duplex go to a single family. We've had another multi-unit, I think it was like five units, go to a single, to owner-occupied duplex. Uh, and there's another one I'm trying to remember. I know there's been several others in the, uh, right on that block, not in the general area, but on that block between University and Drake Park uh, Avenue. So again, a lot of that is occurring. Uh, we haven't, uh, the Drake Park neighbors haven't had a chance to meet on this issue yet, but I did make an effort to take out, send emails and, and uh, phone calls to a number of the people, again, on that block. Uh, and of uh, the 10 people I contacted, I've heard back from five. None of them were in favor of, uh, the, of the proposal. Uh, and uh, some said they could live with the duplex, but some, I mean, uh, uh, others weren't too fond of the building at all. Uh, I will say that of the people that, uh, con uh, that uh, responded, three of them were rental property owners, uh, including uh, Trevor's, uh, Trevor. And uh, they, again, were not in favor of it. And one of them, uh, I will state that he said, you know what, we've bought several multifamilies and reduced them to single families ourselves. That's the way things need to be going. Parking, again, parking has uh, improved also. Odd even parking is working really well on 22nd Street because of the reductions we've seen there, because of the number of units we've gotten rid of. Okay. Ted? Are you yes, in agreement with the staff recommendation? The duplex? Uh, of the not, of the not, oh, absolutely, okay. yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Mike? Just to clarify again, 8,500 square feet is the lot area. It's a 3,500 square foot. 3,800 square foot building, so. I was wondering how the 8,500 square foot. Yeah, yeah. Pretty Thanks. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's not going to be any rebuttal. <laughs> Move staff, then. Okay. Strenuously move staff. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of staff's recommendation, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Acclamation, cap Passes. Been denied. Uh, 
uh, moving right along. We're going into the director's report. Mike, do you have something? Yeah, just real quickly, uh, we tentatively have set a uh, workshop with the city council on March 25th at 7.30 a.m. The uh, tomorrow plan, um, MPO staff have asked to have a joint presentation with Plan and Zoning Commission and the City Council, and that has tentatively been set for March 25th uh, for um, 7.30 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. I will have to send you confirmation of that uh, once that is, is turned up. They're usually finalized the week before the meeting, so I will send out clarification or, or uh, confirmation of that, that workshop, but it is to hear a presentation on and receive your comments on the tomorrow plan. Thank you. Okay. Greg? Can we talk about it beginning of the meeting tonight? Okay, that's what I thought. A question for staff. Any other, anything else for the good of the group? Do. Christine, do you have something quickly? Did we have, did we have a date set for the training for our Gary Taylor? April 10th. April 10th. Yep. And we had, or I'm sorry, let me confirm that date. There were 10 of you who signed up, who I signed up for it. Uh, let me get the date. That's during the day, though, isn't it? Do I look like I'm trying to leave? April 9th, starting at, I believe it starts at 5.30 or 5.45, and that's at the Johnston Hilton Garden Inn. Oh, that's 5 p.m.? 5.30 to 8.30. There's a, a dinner provided, and there's 10 of you that are registered to attend. I don't recall which 10 are signed up. If you emailed me, I will confirm and email out again who is scheduled to attend on April 9th. Great. Great. Anything else? See nothing? We're adjourned. You found your style. Your view, and I walk the city like you need to.